Falchagu Yeo Scots, the Celtic Podcast. Kimraha Holodunya, how is everyone? On today's show in Fekimich Beck and Gaelic, that's Let's Try Little Gaelic. We'll be in Lesson 6, Asking Questions. In Celtic History, The Prisoner's Table. And in Everyday Celtic Ways, Bunsworth's Banshee. We'll hear music from Karen Matheson, Allison Helzer, Ed Miller, Rachel Newton, and Runrig. And as always, it's a wee bit of Irish trivia to start us off. Which popular actor of Irish descent played the role of Lawrence of Arabia in the popular movie in 1962? Lawrence of Arabia. All right. Check out the Yield Scott Facebook group where you can be a part of the Celtic culture. And keep an eye out for all the different videos our YouTube channel and Facebook group have to offer. Kershmaha, let's kick this thing off. Welcome to Learn a Gaelic Song. Today's song is Urne Avon Chikrak. It's by Capra Cayley. Now, themes of intense sadness seems to go hand in hand in Gaelic music. Now, Gaelic can also be used effectively as a, in historical context as well. Karen Matheson, she revisits this Capra Cayley favorite on her new album, uh, Urum, and it's, but it's composed by Katrina Montgomery. Now, Ernea von Chikrak, which means the Tiger and Woman's Prayer, um, this, this song, its heart, heart-rending strings remind us of the concerning situation in Ethiopia, with its ongoing famine is a modern one, though, but that the issue of famine throughout history is one that Gaelic has been used to expressing time and time again. All right, remember, Gaelic's at the top, English is at the bottom. Get ready.
Scottish Gaelic is native to the Gales of Scotland. Scottish Gaelic developed out of the Old Irish, and learning this beautiful language can be a direct link to your Gaelic ancestors. Follow along in Fekimich Beckham Gaelic, and like I said, let's try a little Gaelic. Falchagu ye old Scots, the beginner's Gaelic course. Kimraha Huladunya, how is everyone? Looky there, you already know how to say welcome to and how is everyone. Alright, in the next 25 lessons um, of Fekimich Beckham Gaelic, that's Let's Try a Little Gaelic, um, with a little work you can gain a rudimentary understanding of the Scottish Gaelic language. Now, these lessons were taken from my weekly podcast beginning back on May 15th of 2020. So if you like, you can listen to them or there as well. But please remember that I am not an authority on the Gaelic language. I just love learning it. I struggle like most all learners. And so what I teach comes right from well-respected Gaelic teachers. I hope you find it interesting, informative, and fun. And as always, I display on the screen what I'm discussing so you can follow along. All right, Kersh Maha, which means, all right then, let's get started. Falchagu ye old Scots, the beginner's Gaelic course. Kimraha Huladunya, how is everyone? Looky there, you already know how to say welcome to and how is everyone. All right, in the next 25 lessons um, of Fekimich Beckham Gaelic, that's Let's Try a Little Gaelic, um, with a little work you can gain a rudimentary understanding of the Scottish Gaelic language. Now, these lessons were taken from my weekly podcast beginning back on May 15th of 2020. So if you like, you can listen to them or there as well. But please remember that I am not an authority on the Gaelic language. I just love learning it. I struggle like most all learners. And so what I teach comes right from well-respected Gaelic teachers. I hope you find it interesting, informative, and fun. And as always, I display on the screen what I'm discussing so you can follow along. All right, Kersh Maha, which means, all right then, let's get started. doing parts uh, lesson six today and as always I will display on the screen what I am discussing all right lesson six today is asking questions all right asking questions is essential to conversing in any language in this section we will learn seven question words in the present tense in later sections we will learn other tenses other question forms and how better to answer them expressing here there and yonder and this and that and over there are very um, similar and easy to confuse knowing this will help with asking questions in Gaelic all right we're gonna move on here so and show is here and shin is there and shoot is yonder so show is this, shin is that, shuit is that. Ha mari an show, Mary is here. Chaniel mari an shin, Mary isn't there. Ha mari an shuit, Mary is over yonder. And ku show, this dog. And ku shin, that dog. And ku ut, that dog, way over yonder. It's kind of, you don't really <laughs> say it, it's kind of implied. All right, questions in the present tense. You have ko, which is who, which koha shin, who is there, or koha ak endorse, who is at the door. You have kimmer. Which is how? Kimraha A. How is he? Or Kimraha U. How are you? You've already heard that one. Um, Kimrahanis U. How do you say? And you add the English word. That's a very helpful phrase to learn. Kimrahanis U. Insert the English word. Ounce the Gaelic. How do you say? whatever in Gaelic. All right. Cunha, which is when. Cunha ha um, iach, achian, 
when is she coming? J, which is what? J ha u a janif. What are you doing? Koviet. How many? Sometimes this is also spelled um, kioviet. But koviet ku aha akit. How many dog is that you? Kersen. Kersen aha and cat and show. Why is the cat here? And of course the last one which is catcha. Now beware, catcha will always be different. Okay? So catcha means where? Catch a veil and dunya. Where's the man? Catch a veil and dunya shin. Where is that man? Alrighty. And we're going to move on to some sentences to translate into English, starting with number one. Kim Rahashiv. Two. Koha Akendoris. Three. Kunyaha Iet Achian. Four. Jeha Uajanov. Five. Koviet Nachoin Ach and Unik. Six. Karsanaha and Doris Fasklitsche. All right.
Celtic history brings you the tales of the land, castles, warriors, heroes, legends, and customs that have created the rich, vibrant, and sometimes strange and wonderful history of the Celtic world. The Prisoner's Table By an unknown maker, circa 1861, this elaborate marquetry table reputedly made by an inmate of the Dublin debtor's prison as a gift for Queen Victoria in order to pay off a portion of his debt and therefore get out of jail early. This magnificent table can be seen in Dublin Castle today and is made from 17 different woods and each piece has handcrafted and fit together precisely. When the finished table was brought before the Queen and she set her eyes upon the table she chose to keep the table and the prisoner. She kept him secretly incarcerated. The prisoner was moved to a better facility though, and this his sentence was prolonged twice what it was originally, as he was forced to build more magnificent furniture at the queen's bequest. He eventually got out, but nobody knows for sure because, well, he was kept in secret. Where the colors cry on lava, mule or moved high, 
among the hills or the borders when I die to be below where I can hear the body to me flow a sweeter place I never will know than the rolling hills or the borders when I die to be below in the rolling hills or the borders. Everyday Celtic Ways brings you the mythology, traditions, and customs that have created a unique and personal culture that still affects those that are Celtic and those that just love the Celtic world. Bunsworth Spanshee. The story of the Reverend Charles Bunworth and the Banshee took place in Butevant County, Cork, Ireland in the 18th century. The Reverend was a much respected man in the area and admired as an accomplished harpist. When he became ill, local people became very concerned. This was a concern that was heightened not by the immediate prognosis of his illness, which was not really thought to be terminal, but the strange events that took place in the area prior to his demise. A servant of the household reported to the concerned family of the Reverend one morning that he had heard the wailing of a banshee. He described how the woman had wailed and moaned and clapped her hands in despair, repeating the Reverend's name over and over and over again. Local people know that this could only mean one thing, for the Banshee was known to all as the lone female figure who cries out in agonizing despair to herald in an impending death. She is cursed by death itself to carry out her awful otherworldly task. Irish people have known her for a long time, have known her as Banshee or Banshee also known in other parts of the Celtic world. The Banshee is seen as a messenger from the other world, which is both the home of the gods and the realm of the dead. The Banshee can take many forms, as she can be old, young, beautiful, or ugly. She is often heard but not seen, and her lonesome cry instills fear in those that hear it. An eerie silence forewarns of her piercing cry, from the smallest insect to the fiercest beast, the woods and forest fall silent and none with the sound to disturb the banshee when she cries, for none want her mournful cry turned upon them. Now the family of the Reverend Bunworth, being a devout Christian, dismissed the talk of the servant as mere superstition, for the Reverend was a man of God, and not such ancient dribble as this besides his health had appeared to be improving. However, this was before the appearance of the Banshee. Now his condition rapidly declined, and now on the night before his condition took a fatal turn, the servants tried anything to help. Reverend Bunworth had been moved downstairs so he could sleep in peace, for something kept making noises at the sill of his windows, and the mournful winds blowing through the trees and the forest only reminded him of the dreadful omen that was rumored in less civilized homes. Even downstairs outside of his room's window, a moaning and clapping had been heard. When servants had gone outside to investigate, it was found that a rose bush close to the window had been partially trampled, as if somebody had made a bed of it. There was no sign of anybody that could have made the noises or trampled the bush which sent fear into the servants of the household. Those who had remained inside the house once again heard the sound of moaning and clapping coming from all different areas around the house, sending them into a, a flurry to discover where the noises emanated from. But nothing came from any search. It seemed as if the noises came from everywhere and from nowhere at the same time as if emanating from your very soul. As the night wore on, the Reverend's health worsened. 
But the howling had only gotten worse. The eerie sounds filled the tall ceilings and walls of the old house. The servants retreated to their quarters, locked their doors, and did all they could to avoid the fate of the Banshee. Inadvertently leaving poor sick Reverend Bunworth to face his awful fate. By morning the noises had stopped, but it was evident that they had taken their toll on poor Reverend. And by the time that dawn broke through the stained glass window at the side of his bed, he had expired as well. Many said this was inevitable, that it had been predicted by the arrival of the Banshee. This is what is so troubling about the Banshee, though. Its ill curse comes on without notice. It runs its course and cannot be subsided by any bribe or offering. Normal people, druids, witches, and demons alike fear the Banshee for this very reason. None are immune to its cry, for it is the cry of death. So if you hear the anguished cry of the Banshee, pray. Pray that she is not coming for you. The End I'm
Top 11 Harrison. Now remember to check out my YouTube channel. It's got Celtic music, podcasts, Gallic language, Gallic song, Celtic history videos, plus lots more. And my Facebook group where you can give me your inputs and insights on all things Celtic. But before I let you go, the trivia question answer. Peter O'Toole. Martian leave in Drasda. Bye for now. But I'm going to let you go with a song.
哈，今年哈嘿。<音樂><音樂>